Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, the name's Oshin. And in this channel, I talk a lot about personal finance, tech, lifestyle hacks, and whatnots. As you can see on the title of this video, I wanted to share to you guys how I'm using data science to set up my personal finance system this 2023. I'm super excited to share with you this video because I've been working on this for quite some time, maybe two months and I was able to finish it during the Christmas holidays. And in order for my discussion to be seamless, I have my iPad here, so I have my notes here, so that I would be able to tell you on how I came up with this and how I've set it up, and what are some of the lessons that I've learned when I was doing this. But before I share to you my system, I would like to tell you first if what system am I using as of last year. So I actually divided my system into two. So the first one is that I have a system for my expenses and the second one is that I have my system for my savings. For my expenses, I have my credit cards and cash. So for my credit cards, I actually have three credit cards and hindi ko nililista whenever I'm using my credit card because I have my online transactions recorded whenever I use my credit cards. For my cash, I don't actually record my cash transactions. So uh, that's a bit bad because, come on, let's face it, di ba? Wala namang may gustong mag-record ng cash transactions nila every single time that they use it. It's quite of a hassle, so I did something to solve that, at least for my case. So for my savings naman, whenever I need to record my savings, I only use a very simple Google Sheet, and then I just keep track of whatever amount on my savings that I have right now, and I only update it if ever I need. You know if I added some money on that. I'm also currently using Airtable as a checklist whenever I needed to pay something or whenever I needed to transfer money to my savings accounts and whenever I needed to again use my credit card to pay up for something. So when I was coming up with my own system there are four questions that I wanted to be answered. So the first one is that how much is my net worth given at a specific date? The second one is where my savings are at. I wanted to know which bank accounts where my savings are at and I wanted to keep track of them and you know just to see rough figures if may laman pa ba siya or wala and the third one is that i wanted to know how much i am spending per month and compare them with my previous months so that i would be able to know if i'm spending too much for this month or i'm spending less this month and i also wanted to know if what is my total expenditure per month or per year or any time frame that I want to see. I also considered one assumption here and the assumption is that I pay my credit cards on time and in full, okay? So this system is optimized for people who always pay their credit cards on time and in full. I think that's something that everyone should be aware of and everyone should be doing, you know, <laughs> paying their credit cards on time and in full. Just a disclaimer that this tool is highly customized for my own needs and for my own flavor and a lot of these things baka hindi kayo interested or it might not work for you. All of the things that I've worked on here are highly customized for my own convenience, for my own comfort, because there are some things that I am not really comfortable with, like for example, keeping track of how much should I spend per month. Um, I don't want to be a bit too restrictive on my money. There are some parts on my budget that are still out of sight, out of mind, and I'm free to spend however I want it to be spent. But I make sure that I should be strict when it comes to saving, but not on spending. It's basically customized for my own psychological behavior. Okay, so first things first, what I do is that every year, I budget my money for the next year. So I usually start this process during October, and I have a Google Sheets template that I use to put everything that I'm going to spend and I'm going to save for next year. So I'll be leaving actually a Google Sheets link for that. I'll be putting it in the description box below. So if you wanted to check it out, just feel free to click it down below. So what I do on that Google Sheets is that I put my estimated annual net income. So I don't put gross. I don't care where my SSS, my pag-ibig funds, my taxes are going because that's money that I won't be able to touch that for me it's as good as gone so I really don't care about that anymore and I will only put attention to that if the need arises but for now I only want to budget the money or the net money that I'm going to receive for next year. Then what I do is that I put annual allocations for that for next year and I've divided it into three. So I have my savings, my expenses, and my investments. There's also one section in this Google Sheet where I put my expected bonuses and my expected 13 month pay but I do not dwell on it too much and hindi ko siya sinasama talaga sa annual budget ko. I know it's not a good practice but for me 
it's fine because I would rather allocate my regular income for my savings and you know I'll just decide what to do with my bonuses when I just receive it so I guess it's fine but what I usually do with my bonuses is that I use it for my retirement I put it on my Pag-ibig MP2 savings account and then once I'm done planning for my annual budget I break them down into 12 months and so I allocate them on this next sheet where I put from January to December and then I just put you know an item like how much I'm going to spend say for my savings or how much I'm going to spend for Spotify or how, how much I'm going to spend for whatsoever you can see some of the items here and if you wanted to use it you can customize it on your own so once I'm done segregating them into months what I do next is that I transfer them into Airtable so that I could have like a monthly breakdown or a monthly checklist that I use if I'm going to pay them or if I'm going to spend on these things so what I like about Airtable is that it's Excel but on steroids and I can group my rows my columns and then I can use it as like a checklist and so yeah it's a lot easier for me to check it if I needed to pay something and if you also want to sign up for an Airtable account feel free to use my link below don't worry it's for free it's not going to cost you anything but if you sign up using my code then I get something and just consider it as help for my YouTube channel so once that I have my checklist already on my Airtable account the next problem is that how do I record my expenses whenever I use cash? Let's face it, it's really, really hard to record your cash transactions. You know, sometimes if you're going to pay something using cash and then at the end of the day, you forgot that you used cash and then you won't be able to record it. So I found a solution on how to do it. Right now, I'm currently using an iPhone and there's this app in the iPhone called Shortcuts. What Shortcuts does is that you can create shortcuts. You can create automated processes for you to be able to automate tasks on your iPhone. And also there's this app in the iPhone called Numbers. It's like the Excel version of Apple. And then I used it to track all of my cash expenses. Only for my cash expenses. For my credit cards, it's a bit of a different story and I'll be sharing to you how I am recording them later on. So basically what I did is that I've set up my Numbers app and my Shortcuts app on my iPhone for me to be able to use Siri, the voice command of iPhone, for me to be able to track my expenses using my iPhone. So like I will just say that, hey Siri, just log my expenses. And then, oh, oops, okay, it detected it now. <laughs> what it's gonna do next is that it's going to ask me what I've spent on that day and on that time, and then how much did I spend using my cash and then what it's gonna do is that once I've already done it it's going to record it on my numbers app it's going to list it down there and then it also gives you the date and take note again that I am only using this on my cash expenses okay not on my credit cards so when I was doing this a friend actually asked me if hmm, what if I don't want to talk in public and I wanted to record it so very simple when you set up your own sheets or on your own tables on the numbers app you can also set up a form that is linked to that sheet and you can just type in whatever you've spent on that form and then just put in the date and time and then it will automatically be added on your table on the numbers app. My next problem is my credit card transactions. This one is a lot easier but it needs a little bit of cleaning and tweaking. Since I have three credit cards right now, I believe I already made two reviews for my Security Bank credit card and for my Union Bank Lazada credit card which you can see also the videos here on the cards and if you wanted to watch it, just click the videos up there. So for my two credit cards, it's actually easy because I can just download download them as Excel files and then clean them using a programming language called Python. Python is a heavily used programming language in the data science world wherein I use it or reuse it for data cleaning, machine learning models, AI, and any other cool stuff that we want to use, uh, anything that's dealing with data. and. Yeah, it's a programming language and it's a very fun programming language and if you wanted to start learning data science, I highly recommend learning using Python. So again, going back, it's a bit easy for this too because what I would do is that I will use Python to clean and parse this data and then combine them into just one single table. So my next problem is my third credit card which is my East West Bank Gold Visa credit card. I'll be sharing a review of this one of these days on my channel so if you want to watch it just make sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell button beside it so that you will be notified once that video is up. So for my East West Bank transactions it's a bit harder because I have no available Excel files that I can download from my online account and I would only rely 
on my statement of account. But the good news is that using Python, I can extract all of the things that I bought using my A-Swiss Bank credit card and also the amount that I've spent and extract them even from the PDF files. And so I made a script on extracting my transactions from those PDF files and then I've just put them into just one single Google Sheet and then I just clean them, categorize them, and then I've also appended it on my other credit card transactions. So once I'm done cleaning all of my expenses table from my credit cards and my cash, what I did next is that I just combined them into one single table and then I made a script also to categorize each item depending if the words are, you know, for example, Starbucks. And then if it sees like the word Starbucks, it will automatically be categorized into food. And I also put some for accommodations, for grocery and stuff like that. So I think that's the challenging part because you, I don't know how to do NLP or natural language processing. So instead, I just used brute force and made a list of all the words that I wanted to see and then categorize them into this specific word. And so basically, this is my data for all of my expenses transactions using both my credit card and cash. So for my savings and net worth tracker, it's a lot easier and simpler because I only have like a Google Sheets and then I list all of my savings on that Google Sheets and as of this date and then the amount and which bank where it's saved. Basically, that's only the data that I need for my savings. But at the same time, I also wanted to know if I would be able to reach my goal for this year. So I've also put like a goal for, you know, some items like a retirement fund or like savings and something like that. But the automation part for this one is that I mentioned that I'm using Airtable as my checklist. So what I'm doing with Airtable is that once that I've marked an item as paid, especially on my savings rows, it will automatically update the table that I am using for my savings so that I would know that, okay, I've paid for this and it will automatically be recorded as an addition to my savings. And so I would be able to compute if how much or how many percent do I need in order for me to reach that specific goal or that specific item. So once that I'm done doing all of my expenses table and my savings, what I'm gonna do next is that, of course, I needed a platform for me to be able to see all of my data easily. So I made a dashboard using this tool called Looker Studio. If you're familiar with Google Data Studio, they actually rebranded to Looker Studio and it looks something like this. So if you can see on my screen, I have both my Looker Studio expenses tracker dashboard and my savings and net worth tracker dashboard. Please know that these are not actual numbers. I just randomized them for video purposes only. It's not true that I spent a million pesos last year, okay? So I just randomized the numbers. So if you can see on my dashboard, I can filter them on the time and date that I wanted to see it. I can also click on some elements of the charts for me to be able to filter them. And if I wanted to access like a specific time frame or a specific credit card or a specific mode of payment, then I can do so. I can also filter it per year or I can also it filter it per month. And yeah, so basically I have like an, an a very, very simple analytics dashboard that I would be able to use if I needed to check my progress on both my savings and my expenses. And the best part for this tool is that I can also access this using my phone and using my iPad. So I don't need to be online using my PC just for me to be able to access this dashboard. So, yeah. So there are two lessons that I've learned when I was doing this. And number one is that I do not need to transfer or use another tool, especially if that tool has an API already. And my second lesson here is that when I made this, I made sure that I have in mind that I do not want to be hard on myself on spending and saving. It doesn't mean that when I, even if I'm doing this, I have to be very strict up to the peso. I'm not comfortable doing that, unlike other personal finance content creators who are very strict on like, you know, counting up to the peso where their money is going. So for me, that's already like a mental burden for me. So I customized this on my own flavor, as I've said, and it's more fit for my psychological needs. Because let's face it, money is really psychological. We have to make sure that whenever we're coming up with a system, that system is an efficient use of our time and of our resources. So the next steps for me is to, number one, make improvements on this system. I don't know when, that's the number one question here. 
hindi ko alam kung kailan ko siya i-improve because I'm also doing other things. And the second one is that I wanted also to create an investment portfolio dashboard. So right now, I only have my savings and my net worth. But what if I wanted to check my investments and, you know, kung okay pa ba mag-invest on a specific investment scheme or an investment stocks. So I wanted to create an investment portfolio that is catered also towards my needs. And that's it for my video guys. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you also get to be inspired on creating your data science projects and maybe set up your own personal finance system. And if you find value on this video, please do not forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel and click the bell button beside it so that you will be notified whenever I have a new video. All right? And if you also have like other data science projects that you want to try out and you're trying out, feel free to also put them in the comments section. Let's interact and you know have an exchange of data science projects. And I'm also happy to see them also in action. And again, thank you very much. This is Oshin. I'm signing out and see you on my next video. Bye!